What really happened with your host, Mike Rivero. You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network, where you'll find out what the Fukushima is going on. Welcome back to our show, hour number two. We're not opening the phone lines just yet because I want to get through uh, more of this news, uh, but we will open the phone lines in a little while, so please have patience there. Uh, Getting on back to wokeness and political correctness, there are professors from the University of Arizona and the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs are out there saying that success and merit are barriers to the equity agenda. They're saying that uh, merit is unjust because it rewards productive individuals. Well, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. So uh, professors Beth uh, Michnick and Jesse L. Smith uh, wrote for Inside Higher Education saying that we need to get rid of uh, meritocracy and uh, uh, because, uh, you know, what we want is true equity, which means everybody is forced to be equal. Now, the declaration says all men and presumably women are created equal. But what that really was, was a repudiation of the then prevalent idea that some people were born noble, that if you were born into the nobility, you were automatically better than everybody else. And the foundation of the United States was, no, there is no nobility. In fact, uh, there was originally... uh, 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 an amendment to the Constitution uh, basically forbidding titles of nobility uh, in the United States of America. So that's what that really is all about. And, uh, you know, everybody uh, said equality be good, and what they were talking about was equality of opportunity, uh, equal access to education, equal access to credit. And then politicians realized that even with equal opportunity and access to education and credit, people weren't becoming equal because we are all different in our talents and our desire to excel. So it was more politically expedient to mandate the equality of outcome rather than of the circumstances allowing people uh, the opportunity uh, to do well. And this is an extension of that insanity. Uh, They want a world in which everybody is forced to be absolutely equal academically, physically, gender wise, I guess, is part of that. And uh, it it is complete nonsense. Uh, You you cannot prosper a nation by pulling the top down uh, to the level of the bottom, which is what equity really means. Uh, You can't pull the bottom up. All you can do is pull the top down. And this nonsense about getting rid of the merit system Uh, is an example of that kind of thinking. All right. Uh, Let's see. Attorney General Merrick Garland has announced a federal lawsuit against Texas over the heartbeat abortion law. This is clearly unconstitutional because this is the federal government intruding into the internal uh, workings of a state here. Meanwhile, left-wing activists uh, staged a protest outside Brett Kavanaugh's home uh, after he rejected the uh, challenge to the Texas law. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was attacking uh, Governor Abbott over the state's new abortion law, uh, and she used the phrase menstruating persons, because you're not supposed to say men or women, uh, You know, that's not politically correct. So she said menstruating uh, persons. um, And uh, uh, Ocasio-Cortez insisted that not only women menstruate, but also trans men and non-binary people. I mean, this girl needs to take high school biology all over again. Uh, And according to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, little prepubescent girls and elderly women past menopause who don't menstruate must not be real women. I mean, that's just how silly all of this stuff is getting. Uh, Over in New York, the governor there is calling for Facebook to crack down on the pro-lifers, claiming that pro-lifers are putting out rampant misinformation on abortion. Well, there's not really much misinformation about abortion. It involves sucking this kid out, grinding him up and throwing him in the trash. We're actually selling him off to a laboratory someplace. Um, 
getting into gun rights, the Biden administration is signaling an intention to join the United Nations Global Gun Registration Treaty, followed by a nationwide confiscation effort. Now, recently, the uh, gun registry over in Great Britain got hacked, and that information was made public. So I don't think we want a, a larger registry because it will be a target for the hackers. And I imagine probably the British and the Australians are regretting now giving up their guns. Over at the Atlantic, one of their writers is saying there needs to be a cultural war on gun ownership. And he's uh, basically is expressing his belief that ordinary Americans are too stupid to take stock of their own circumstances and determine how to best defend themselves and their families. You know, that's what we have police for, except the police are all being defunded. Now, a little bit of good news. The United States Navy Marine Corps Court of Criminal Appeals has ruled that bump stocks are not machine guns. And uh, uh, they're going against this 2018 order classifying them as such following that uh, false flag shooting out there in Las Vegas. And uh, so the uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives uh, uh, issue uh, a new interpretation of the rule that contradicted the ATF's previous interpretation from the 1930s. OK, and uh, the judges added that the change in definition was altered without passing legislation, meaning the bump stock ban uh, is legally questionable. For that matter, so is Biden's vaccine mandate. And the White House has now officially pulled the nomination of David Chipman that Biden wanted running uh, the ATF and uh, shooting enthusiasts, Second Amendment enthusiasts are celebrating that because Chipman made no bones about the fact that he didn't think ordinary Americans should have guns at all. Down in Australia, their high court, their equivalent of our Supreme Court, has ruled that Facebook users are responsible for the content of complete strangers who post defamatory comments on their posts. And the ruling upholds a June 2019 ruling by the Supreme Court of New South Wales, home to Australia's largest city of Sydney. It's a beautiful city, by the way. And it runs counter to how virtually everyone thinks about liability on the Internet. And my guess is probably a lot more people are going to be leaving Facebook uh, uh, anyway uh, with, with this one here. Uh, YouTube has removed all the context boxes regarding the New World Order conspiracy site-wide after Australia's Carrie Chan admits contact tracing is part of the New World Order plans. Remember, we talked about that last week. Uh, two of these Australian officials came on out and just openly said contact tracing uh, is part of the plans for the New World Order here. And uh, down in Texas, a lot of good things coming out of Texas here. Governor Greg Abbott signed a bill last Thursday uh, to protect Texans from wrongful social media censorship based on their political views. And the bill passed during a special session in August. And so people who live in Texas, if they are censored for their political views on any social media company, they can legally sue for damages. So <clears throat> lawyers are going to be busy down there in uh, Texas. Um, TikTok is in a little bit of hot water. Uh, somebody decided to do a little bit of a check. Uh, this was over at the Wall Street Journal. They had one of their people uh, create a TikTok account stating that their age was 13. And TikTok's algorithms were serving up sexual content, content about drugs and alcohol. And uh, it said, you know, clearly this is a 13-year-old user. And uh, on TikTok's For You page, uh, the investigation revealed sexually oriented videos were included on that page. Now, TikTok has responded by saying they're working on a better filter tool for the younger accounts. Okay. 
All right, if you own an iPhone or an iPad, you need to get the latest patch. I know we're all waiting for iOS 15 to come on out, uh, but you need to get the iOS 14.8, I think it is here, uh, because uh, security researchers determine uh, that the Pegasus spyware from Israel-based NSO group uh, can exploit and infect the iPhone and uh, iPad uh, through a maliciously crafted PDF file. So Apple issued a patch uh, that blocks that exploit, and so you need to definitely uh, do an update on that. Uh, let's see. Um, Yandex uh, is battling uh, the largest distributed denial of service attack in Russian internet history. Now, uh, Yandex is uh, uh, global. Uh, they're very big in Russia. Uh, and uh, they basically are a search engine uh, that does not censor. And as a result, uh, they are not well loved uh, by the current regime. And so somebody somewhere is definitely uh, angry with them. Over in Singapore, they're testing robots that will patrol the streets for undesirable behavior like smoking. And the robots are known as Xavier, are equipped with cameras that provide 360 degree coverage and sensors that allow them to navigate in public and analyze potential public safety violations. Singapore is very, very strict, by the way, here. Okay. <clears throat> Biden officials are now out there claiming how solar power can provide nearly half the nation's electricity by the year 2015. You know, Afghanistan was a disaster. The vaccine mandate isn't working. So they're dragging out human-caused global warming. And uh, as a matter of fact, when Biden was in Idaho, he was talking about that as well, trying to blame those wildfires on climate change. When uh, the reality is, and One American News uh, was reporting on this just yesterday, uh, was the failure to keep the fire breaks open uh, and to uh, basically uh, do preventative uh, uh, maintenance on those forests here. Meanwhile, story coming on out of LifeSite News, the Arctic sea ice is expanding. Ooh, Al Gore is angry about that one here. And we're less than 10 years away from the oft-claimed tipping point for the planet, past which we will all be doomed. But sea ice in the Arctic Ocean is the highest it has been in the last nine years. It has increased more than 30% from last year. And my sense is we're going to have a really uh, nasty winter this year. We had a couple of mild ones here, but my, my instincts are telling me it's going to be rough uh, this year. And uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, they've issued their report for 2021, and it basically undermines claims of intense temperature increases. And uh, again, there are accusations that the uh, global warming people uh, like to fudge the data. That certainly was the case with the uh, uh, email and computer code leak from the Hadley Climate Research Unit at the University of East Anglia that came to be known as Climate uh, Climate Gate here. Representative Dan Cranshaw uh, is out there responding to Bernie Sanders' latest climate rant, uh, saying it's not actually about climate change; it's about control. Okay, yesterday SpaceX launched 51 Starlink Internet satellites into polar orbit. Uh, tomorrow the civilians in space are going to be launched, and I wish them a lot of luck. And SpaceX is going to have their first Falcon Heavy launch in two years in early October. All righty, we're going to go ahead and open up the phone lines now. 512-248-8252. Uh, and, uh, oh, my goodness, we already have callers waiting on there. So let's go to Joshua in New York. Hello, Joshua. Welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Hello, Joshua. Hi. Hold on one second. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. What's going on? Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Okay. So, um, yeah, I just want to bring up... Yep, I wanted to bring up stuff about 9-11 real quick over the weekend. 
Uh, bit shoot, there was a video. I'm going to tell you right now exactly the thing. It's Myth Chronicler. You go to bitshoot.com. I don't know if you've heard of bitshoot.com before. I think you have. Yeah, I, I, I use um, bitshoot and myself. And um, you go to Myth Chronicler. M I T. Yeah, M I T H C H R O N I C L E R. Now, it's a video from 2001. Bulls 9 911, and it's a guy, a kid or whatever, um, who's showing the first tower got hit. That's where it starts off. Like you don't see, the, you don't see the first tower get hit. You just see that, the, that there was a, something happened, and it's smoking and all that. There's a whole. Okay, you know there and is then, a like, video of the first in, tower being hit. See, um, it's part of the, the No Day Brothers happened. documentary. No, okay, Joshua? so there is one because I, yeah, I never there, there is a video before, of the first plane so, hitting okay. the first tower. Um, and it's supposed to be the it's supposed to be the Okay, so this other video so this video you should check it out and see and see it and all that. Everyone should look at it. Uh Miss Chronicler on bitchu.com. And then also there was a guy who supposedly has come forward on nine eleven of this uh the other day and he said that he was one of the people that helped plant charges in the actual um 9-11 building and it's some uh, power. I, I saw and that one. We ran that story. Like 2001, uh, I think, you know, he's got a, he's got a fatal also... disease and decided to come clean. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, and, um, thank... All right. So then when it comes to that, I think that was uh, pretty much what I had to mention. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for the phone call. We're going to go to Peter in Los Angeles. Hello, Peter. Welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Yeah, Mike, I'll keep this uh, short. You know, the exemption that the, uh, the Biden placed uh, that uh, postal service just have to be, right? Okay, you you kind of breaking up there. Can you get the microphone closer to your mouth? Well, I'm in my car, so I, I, may, I may not be able to do that. You know, okay, the, can you hear right. me? Uh, I can hear you. Uh, Go ahead. All right. The postal system, Biden, uh, Biden exempted them from the vaccinations, right? Yes. All right. Can you think of why that would be, Mike? Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I made a joke the other day that he was basically uh, rewarding them for uh, having delivered all the false ballots that got him into office. Uh, <clears throat> but frankly... Uh, you know, postal workers, especially those on the delivery routes, I mean, uh, they're potentially major carriers uh, of any illness. And so it doesn't That's make exactly. sense. Now, the White House is claiming uh, that uh, the post office uh, workers will be vaccinated, but the authority is coming from some other place in the government. All right. Well, so here's here's my, my, what I want to bring up. It's exactly what you just said. Uh, you know, A, they are the, the most efficient delivery system. They handle every piece of snail mail mm -hmm. physically. They go to every single door from the wilds of Alaska to, to uh, Florida to everywhere in between. Uh, and, and they're under total federal control, right? I mean, yes. They don't get paid. You know. So if you're going to have a, uh, one, one group of people in the United States that you need to have to deliver whatever bad thing that you need to deliver. Can you think of a better delivery system than the U.S. Postal Service? I see what you're saying, yes. All right, well, that was my first insight uh, that I wanted to give you, but, but I'll let you go. I know you're short. There's other callers. All right. Well, Peter, thank you very much for the phone call. We're going to go to Al in Canada. Hello, Al. Welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Hi, Mike. Um, <clears throat> you were talking about that uh, iOS 14.8 yes. um, update. Yes. You're waiting for 15. Yep. You know what I say? Why wait? Just smash the stupid thing. They can't contact trace you. Um, they can't. Is that the music, Mike? Yeah, it is. Stay on the line. I'm going to put you on hold. You. I'm going to come right back to you.
Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now, but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge and knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. What this country is coming to, I sure would like to know. If they don't do something by and by, the rich will live and the poor will die. Doggone, I mean the panic is on. Can't get no way, can't draw no pay. Welcome back to our show here. We're talking with Al in Canada. We're talking about iPhones and iPads and iOS 15. And Al, as I understand it, you have a rather dramatic way of uh, dealing with cybercrime and privacy issues. Yes, I just, I don't partake in it at all, period. Mm -hmm. I don't get involved. I use cash. I don't use a cell phone. I have Magic Jack that's run by the Israelis. I know that. Mm-hmm. Um, I use a VPN. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is there? <laughs> I can't be tracked. Well, you know, the, um, the, uh, you know, the reality, I mean, great that you can do that. Uh, the reality is uh, that for the vast majority of people, uh, you know, cell phones and laptops have become an indispensable part of their lives, and we're just going to have to live with that. But again, uh, it is important that you put this patch uh, into your Apple products uh, and, and not just wait for iOS f- 15, okay? You know what, Mike? I don't believe that. If I can live without a cell phone and without social media, anyone can. Because no one, there's not one person, there's not one entity, there's not one group of people. Well, we could be a group of people. There's nothing that's going to stop this intrusion on our lives. Mm-hmm. Nothing. They can't contract, contact trace people. 
if they don't know where they are. It's very simple. And on top of that, <laughs> and this is the best part, these people that are monetizing your data, they can't monetize it anymore. It hurts them in the pocketbook, right where it counts. Right? Yeah. That's what capitalism and the free market economy is actually all about. You want to hurt someone? Do it with your wallet. I've got a friend that just got off of social media, and he's actually thinking, seriously thinking about giving up the cell phone because he, he knows he doesn't really need it. Mm-hmm. Right? When I'm out and about, you know, doing my thing, you know, on the town, as it were, or whatever, I actually think when I see people talking on the phone mm-hmm. or it rings all of a sudden and, you know, they answer it, I think to myself, Why? <laughs> Why would you? Why would anybody want to be bothered? You know, maybe people are lonely, or um, you, you know, they they have a low sense of self worth or whatever. And and you know, when they get their likes, and uh, you know, the phone rings, they're like, oh, someone cares. You know what, Mike? No one cares. Well, you know, uh, you know, obviously that works for you. Uh, you know, doesn't work for me. You know, I. You know, I, I, I'm a communications freak, and uh, I wear my cell phone uh, pretty much everywhere I go, and uh, it's uh, on my nightstand charging uh, uh, at night. Uh, <clears throat> it's in silent mode, of course, so uh, people don't wake me up with calls about my extended car warranty and things like that. Anyway, <laughs> Al, thanks a lot thanks for a your lot, uh, point of view here, and we're going to let you go. Now, getting on back to the news tomorrow, SpaceX's Crew Dragon uh, is going to launch into orbit with the first all-civilian crew. They're going to orbit for three days. And, uh, you know, this this is going to be a first. This is going to be the first civilian crew. Uh, and uh, so I'm wishing them a lot of luck. I, I hope it really works on out here. All right, there is a, um, pro- a project coming up from NASA in November of this year, uh, NASA is going to run a test uh, of a potential system for uh, preventing an asteroid impact on Earth. It's called DART, the Double Asteroid Redirection Test. And uh, they're aiming for uh, literally a, a moon around an asteroid. There's an asteroid out there has its own moon. And they're going to ram this 500-kilogram spacecraft into this moon at over 23,000 kilometers per hour, hopefully changing the moon's velocity by a tiny amount. Now, the thinking here is that in the future, uh, if we spot an asteroid a long ways off that is headed toward Earth, a a future dart-like spacecraft can hit it and just nudge it enough that uh, its course changes and it misses the Earth. Uh, There is a new paper out, though, saying that if it uh, doesn't actually hit the exact center of mass, uh, the moon will tumble rather than change course. We've got to take another break for commercials. We'll be right back. I'm sorry, I'm a minute early. I thought I heard the music. Okay. Uh, The uh, James Webb Space Telescope is finally getting a launch date. Uh, It will be launched on December 18th of this year. There have been so many delays and, uh, you know, a lot of people criticizing NASA for how long it took to get here. Uh, But we are finally here. And uh, the James Webb Space Telescope, which is is gigantic compared to the Hubble, uh, is going to be launched aboard an Ariane 5 launch vehicle uh, from French Guiana. So now we're coming up on the commercial break. We'll be back with more news after these few words. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org.
Have you been looking for a trusted long-term storable food company? We have a solution for you. Simply Clean Foods is dedicated to providing the best quality food you can buy next to fresh from a farmer's market. Our line of resealable fruits, vegetables, and meats are suitable for everyday use, and you won't have to worry about throwing away valuable groceries ever again. Our food is completely GMO-free, and our stringent quality controls, plus testing for heavy metals, makes us unique in the storable foods market. Simply Clean Foods' primary focus is to bring clean food to people all around the world and change the way we look at freeze-dried food in our daily cooking. When you purchase from simplycleanfoods.net, not only will you be receiving high-quality food, but you will also be supporting veterans in need across the country and those who are affected by natural disasters. Right now, Amazon Prime members will receive fast two-day shipping. Go to simplycleanfoods.net. That's simplycleanfoods.net. But do it today. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong part and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll-free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855-2-KEEP-IT today. Born in the city with a silver spoon, great grandson of the oil tycoon, raised by wolves, thinks he owns the moon, socialist banker to the one world goons, Davy Rockefeller, chairman of the CFR. All right, welcome back to our show here. We have open phone lines, 512-248-8252. Getting on back to the space news, uh, Perseverance uh, has now successfully taken two rock samples, and uh, analysis on those samples by Perseverance is showing indications uh, that Mars had a potentially habitable, sustained environment. And uh, this, of course, is a little bit of vindication for us Viking people here. And uh, project scientists say Perseverance's first ever rock sample is basaltic in composition, means like lava, uh, maybe the product of a lava flow. And uh, the rocks may have formed from the rapid cooling of low viscosity lava. And a long dead volcano could be the culprit. And there are a lot of volcanoes uh, on Mars right now. Uh, more pertinent to the possibility of a formerly habitable world is the presence of salt minerals in the rocks, signs that groundwater may have once flowed through them or perhaps collected on top of them and then evaporated away, leaving the salt behind. Now, this issue of life on Mars has been contentious. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Vikings, the Viking landers, uh, did have an experiment that reported finding indigenous life. It had a second experiment which said no, 
but that experiment has since been determined to have had a design flaw where it would not work with the uh, high content of perchlorates in the Martian soil. And uh, I understand that, you know, NASA doesn't want to uh, be embarrassed. Uh, there was that whole thing about the Martian meteor uh, that appeared to have fossil bacteria in it. And everybody's saying, oh, no, no, couldn't be, couldn't be. I remember during Viking, we were we were getting all kinds of nasty communication uh, from uh, the religious who said there couldn't possibly be life on Mars because then Earth wasn't going to be unique. And uh, God was not going to sit up nights to admire us here. Uh, so uh, I would like to see a little vindication here that Mars does still have indigenous life. It's going to be a little hard picking it out, though, because uh, uh, whereas Viking was sterilized before launch uh, to uh, prevent any earthbound germs uh, from reaching Mars, later spacecraft didn't go through that stringent a cleaning and so if life is found on Mars, they're going to have to go through uh, the additional steps to determine uh, if it is indigenous to Mars or if, in fact, it's something that was transplanted from Earth here. All righty. <clears throat> now, Michael Brown is a Caltech astronomer. He was the guy leading the uh, campaign to demote Pluto to a dwarf planet all the way back in 2006. And I'm an old timer. I still think Pluto is a planet. Uh, but he has co-written a new study uh, that claims to have narrowed the region where a potential new planet might be located. So the search is on again. They used to call it the uh, 10th planet search. Now they're calling it the uh, ninth planet search. And I remember when I worked at Table Mountain, uh, any time that uh, the astronomer scheduled to use the telescope uh, failed to show up, which actually did happen on occasion, uh, uh, we would search the area where they said uh, Planet 10 was to be found. We didn't find it, obviously, here. All righty, so uh, <clears throat> they're still out there looking for uh, an extra planet. And the reason they're doing that is the orbits of the known planets, uh, they don't exactly match predictions. There is something out there tugging on them. Okay, we're going to go back to the phones now to Kelly in Austin. Hello, Kelly. Welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Hey, I was interested to hear what you said about uh, the composition of the rocks on Mars. You said they were basaltic in composition, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, well, that's the ocean basin right there. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing as the Hawaiian Islands, the Galapagos Islands, I've been to both. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't <laughs> I mean, what that tells you is that Mars has a mantle with a composition like as, as that of Earth. It's a fur of magnesium-rich mantle. Uh, so that's another thing that really underscores the overall similarity between the geology of Mars and the geology of Earth. You know, I, I, I've mm -hmm. looked at Mars a great deal from various satellite imagery. Uh, and <laughs> really, if, if, if you so didn't have know, I. you were looking at Mars... <laughs> If you didn't know you were looking at Mars, you'd think you were on Earth in many yeah. cases. You know, I've seen photos from the various explorers there um, showing landscapes with very clearly defined cross-bedded sandstones, mm -hmm. desert sandstones, for example. Uh, and really, as I said, if you didn't know you were looking at Mars, you'd think you were looking at some, an image somewhere on Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mars really, I, I think, overall is probably about 99% similar to Earth with respect to its overall composition. Oh, uh, yeah, well, the geology is definitely there. I mean, Mars has more craters than Earth, but, uh, you know, going all the way back to the early Mariner missions, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you could see very obvious uh, stream and riverbeds and, uh, you know, uh, features mm -hmm. indicating uh, uh, flows of uh, massive water. And uh, that came as a bit of a shock to a lot of people. Uh, because I was literally born in a time uh, when most people on Earth thought Mars uh, was very much like Earth, had an advanced civilization, and those mariners went out there, and a lot of people were expecting to see uh, uh, Schiaparelli's uh, uh, canals, and uh, uh, instead they saw a surface that was more moon-like than Earth-like, and they all said, oh, shucks, you know, and uh, yeah. everything. So that was a big cultural change there. Oh, I see. You must have read the Martian Chronicles, too. When you oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, actually, Ray Bradbury was a friend. 
Was he really? Yeah. How did you get to meet him? Uh, I met him first when I was going to Cal State Fullerton. He was friends uh, with uh, one of my teachers, uh, Kirk Mee. And then I ran into him again uh, when I was working at 20th Century Fox. And I actually smuggled him into the Magic Castle, even though he was wearing a pair of jeans, which is absolutely verboten. So, uh, yeah, oh, we stayed in touch I, over the years, and I was sorry to hear of his passing. Oh, I adore Ray Bradbury. I've read everything he's ever written. Um, and I, I'm fortunate I have a, an autographed copy of the Martian Chronicles. It's not a first edition copy, but I have a, a second a second edition uh, copy of the Martian Chronicles. And it's sitting well, up there. And occupied I had the an autographed photo, show. but that's one of the things that got lost uh, going from Oahu to here. I had a yeah. whole box of pictures of like Gene Roddenberry and Gene Simmons and, uh, uh, or rather Gene Seberg rather, and uh, uh, that all got lost. Uh, kind yeah, of heartbroken. He seemed, he about seemed that. like he seemed like a really nice guy. I mean, he I was. Right? <laughs> he was. He was just wonderful. And in fact, uh, uh, you know, he uh, uh, gifted me a copy of the Halloween Tree uh, when I was going through the aftermath of my mother's passing. So he, he was uh-huh. he was he was as nice in person as he appeared to be in in his public presentations. Yeah, do you have a favorite book of his? Uh, um, I would have to say it's probably uh, Rendezvous. Uh, no, that's Arthur Clarke. I'm sorry. Uh, Martian Chronicles would definitely be it. Yeah, I'd say Martian Chronicles as well. I, I, I really have to look back at something like Fahrenheit Four Five One as as a as, as an outstanding as an outstanding novel. But then some of his other novels, such as uh, Something Wicked This Way Comes, for example, mm-hmm. uh, is, is really an outstanding an outstanding novel as well. Uh, and I really, uh, he, he's a writer who's <laughs> never wrote anything I didn't like. But the Martian yeah. Chronicles really stood out, and I think I've probably read, I've read that probably any, oh, five five times or more. Just a remarkable writer, you know. And I thought yes, he was of, of, of the exploration he was, of Mars and, was absolutely uh, beautiful. He actually uh, wrote a play called The Wonderful Ice Cream Suit, and uh, it was performed in a small theater in Hollywood, and. Uh, you know, I got to go see him there as well. Well, God, I'm glad you got a chance to meet Ray Bradbury. You're the first person I know uh, who has. And uh, Well, you're one degree wonderful. of separation away. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad I know that now. I'll look at you with more with, with, with renewed respect. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I, love, I love Bradbury, and, and he's one of the writers... Uh, I grew up in a time when science fiction was really uh, all the rage among my class. Among my, uh, oh, my yeah, kids. me too. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. 2001 A Space Odyssey is, is the, the film that inspired me to go into visual effects. Did it really? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that movie. I, I read the book, too, Arthur C. Clarke's book, and, and I, I was I was amazed by that as well. There's another book I read years ago by Fred Hoyle. It was October the 1st, is Too Late. I don't know whether you had a chance to read that one, but I highly recommend No, I missed that one. that one. You know, Great uh, book. Uh, I liked, the, I liked uh, Ring World by Larry Niven. Uh, I liked the whole uh, Neuromancer uh, series by William Gibson. I'm, I'm a big mm-hmm. science fiction fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got, I've got shelves and shelves in my library devoted to science fiction. Older yeah. science fiction. <laughs> I'm not Some a big fan of going really to the careful. conventions, <laughs> but I'm definitely a fan of the books and the movies. Anyway, yeah. listen, uh, Kelly, uh, need to let you go here. We're running short on time, and we're going to okay. switch over to Bye. James in Vancouver. Hello, James. Welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Uh, yes, good afternoon. Um, I was doing some checking here, and uh, Mars, or they're talking about its uh, atmospheric content. It's got carbon dioxide. And some water vapor, mm-hmm. uh, but it doesn't say it has any nitrogen. I'm wondering if that might be a problem. Uh, it would certainly uh, be a problem. Well, you know, I mean, uh, when life evolves, they lo- evolve uh, to deal with the environment that they evolve in. This idea that mm-hmm. we're only going to find life on planets just like Earth uh, is rather chauvinistic, in my opinion. Uh and I think the extremophiles we find on this planet uh, illustrates that. Uh, we're very comfortable on Earth because we evolved here. Any life that has evolved on Mars is probably going to be very comfortable there. Any life that's swimming in those methane pools on Titan is probably going to be very comfortable there. And uh, so, uh, you know, we, we shouldn't 
try and judge other possible uh, 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 biological environments based on our Earth prejudices. I, uh, under, under nitro comes phosphor, am I right? Uh, you mean on nitrogen? the periodic table? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, nitrogen is a noble gas. Uh, no, I, no, I, no, I'm nit- sorry. No, it's not a noble gas. Yeah. Um, nitrogen, I think phosphor. Well, maybe if they could use phosphor. They could use something else that's got uh, similar properties. Yeah, they, they could. The- uh, you know, uh, that may be a good way to distinguish between Earth life and uh, Martian yeah. life is uh, right. to look for that kind of chemistry. Yeah. Could I ask one more question? Sure. Uh, the SpaceX, okay, that is a rocket that goes straight up. Am I right? Uh, the one that's going up tomorrow is going to go into orbit for three days. Oh, it'll orbit for three Now, when it lands, how does it land? On its uh, uh, right back on the bottom, on its pad? Or does it have some kind of a... Uh, uh, how does it land? Well, the booster will land, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, on its legs. That's part, part okay. of... SpaceX's plan, uh, the actual capsule itself uh, will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and I presume land underneath parachutes. Okay, uh, but the other ones that went up, uh, the uh, a couple months ago, they went up, uh, Branson and those guys, it yeah. goes up, but does it, does it come down uh, with a retro rocket then? Like a retro uh, no, well, it. it basically falls toward the earth. We're, and again, we're talking two separate items here because at the top of its suborbital yeah. flight, uh, the capsule right. separates and the capsule comes down on parachutes. Uh, the booster oh, okay. glides back down to uh, towards the earth. And then as it gets close to the earth, uh, it fires one of its rocket engines to slow it down and bring it in for a landing. Oh, so it lands with that retro rocket then? That, 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 yeah. Um, oh, that's interesting. Just like the old uh, 1950s science fiction movies. Yeah, well, I was thinking of those uh, 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 Thunderbirds are go and those. Um, <laughs> I remember that, that show. Up. I remember yeah, that then, show. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that that was very. Uh, uh, this is what I think they're doing. Uh, their rocket is much uh, much better, or uh, yeah, they're using that kind of thing, right? So. Yes. Uh, okay, well, thanks kindly. I'll uh, get back to you then. All right, thank you very much here. And uh, again, we still have open phone lines. We're almost to the end of the program there, 512-248-8252. Getting on back to NASA, uh, there is the Deep Space Network. This is a uh, the uh, satellite spacecraft communication systems. They're spread across uh, three continents. There's one of them in uh, Goldstone, California. Uh, which I've actually had the honor of visiting. Uh, There's another down in Australia and another one in Spain. But NASA has so many spacecraft up there now, uh, they're really overloaded, and so NASA is getting ready to add more dishes uh, to the deep space network. And I remember when Claire and I were living on Oahu, uh, we would hike along the, uh, uh, the north shore, and there was a NASA tracking station there as well. And I remember just seeing that dish, you know, uh, track something across the sky and then immediately skew over, uh, slew over rather, uh, and track something else and then slew over and track something else again. So they were really working that system very, very hard. Getting on back to the space station last Thursday, uh, they had a smoke alarm go off and uh, the astronauts uh, claimed they could smell something burning uh, and it's been uh, tracked to the Russian segment of the space station. And they're still trying to figure out exactly uh, what happened there because <clears throat> fire in space is a very, very serious situation. All righty. In April of this year, the European Commission's Health Division published a working document in which it announced that the European Union's GMO regulations were not fit for purpose. And the commission made suggestions uh, that could lead to crop plants produced using experimental new GMO techniques, such as gene editing, being exempted from the requirements of the regulation. Now, this has got all kinds of safety people, health people upset. Uh, 
uh, they're slamming the commission over this idea of deregulating uh, GMOs. And there are a total of 57 different groups consisting of non-governmental organizations, a peasant farmer organization, business trade associations, uh, have all contacted the commission strongly opposing this deregulation of GMOs. And frankly, I don't blame them one tiny little bit. Okay, now, <clears throat> let's see. Um, getting on to some other news here. Um, oh, we have a caller on the line. Oh, we got to take a break, and then we have a caller on the line. We'll be right back. Hey gang, Patrick Slattery here with an important message that is pertinent to anyone who shops for groceries, eats food, or just has an inquisitive mind like myself. What I'm about to introduce you to is a segment of our food culture that has been kept so low profile to the American public that virtually no one is aware of how dominant it is on our refrigerator and cupboard shelves. What I'm talking about is the kosher certification industry and the new app, Koshertify, that delivers a comprehensive education on all aspects regarding this little-known practice. After reviewing this app, I found that it is useful for practically anyone who purchases food, regardless of their religious faith or identity. Its database of products not kosher certified is a win-win convenience for all food-conscious people. So why not check out the kosherquestion.com or click on the link at nationalbugle.com and see how modifying your grocery shopping with the Koshertified app can make a huge difference for your future. For over 20 years now, Extendabite has proven time and again, it really works. Here is a testimonial from Amazon.com. I received an arterial switch at birth. In my mid-20s, I started getting slight runs of NSVT. Nothing too serious, but enough to cause worry. I started taking Extendivite a little over two years ago and it helped cut the palpitations and NSVT down drastically. This isn't a cure-all supplement. I strongly recommend a good diet and exercise to aid in any heart troubles you may be having. And I strongly recommend giving Extendivite a try. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply. To order, call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. That's H-E-A-R-T-D-R-O-P.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Standing six foot four, weighing 245 pounds of crime-fighting, political science, analyzing brawn. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Patrick Slattery. So, Mike, get off this anti-cicada agenda. I'm a born-again traditional Christian, and my favorite possessions are right here on my nightstand. That would be the King James Bible and my 357 revolver. I'd rather be ruled by Chinamen than Jews. Cool it with the anti-Semitic remarks, right? Just because you steal an election and terminate the Republic doesn't mean you terminate the people in the Republic, because we're still here. I'm not taking the vaccine. you, Bill Gates. There was a way forward still on January 6th. What needed to be done is to object to every single state. The COVID-19 virus was the setup. The vaccine could very well be a bioweapon. The Patrick and Jeremy Show. Tuesday at 9 Central and Wednesday at 1 Central. Some are maxed out all their credit cards. Some are working two jobs and living in cars. Minimum wage won't pay for a roof, won't pay for a drink. If you gotta have proof, just try it yourself, Mr. CEO. See how far 515 an hour will go. Take a part-time job at one of your stores. I bet you can't make it here anymore. Welcome back to our show here, last segment of our program on this Tuesday, and we're going to go to James in Charlotte. Hello, James. Welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Yeah, hi, Mike. Uh, I just uh, thought I'd hit you with a Ray Bradbury trivia question to, mm -hmm. to wind up the program with. Do you know the title of the single Twilight Zone episode that he scripted? 
Oh, man. Uh, I remember that he did script one. Uh, I remember that he actually was a script doctor on the Gregory Peck uh, version of Moby Dick. Uh, uh, I don't remember the Twilight Zone episode, though. Yeah, it, it was uh, in the third season. It was The title was I Sing the Body Electric. Oh, yes, of course. A, of course, yes, you're right. Yeah. It was about a robotic grandmother. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, I remember the episode. Uh, father now. gets for his children. Yeah, I remember well, the episode. Yeah, it happened to be uh, the episode number one hundred of the uh, of that series of the Twilight Zone. It's just, you know, I, know I loved that original that. Twilight Zone. I know they tried to revive it back. Uh, I think it was in the eighties, uh, without much success mm -hmm. because. Uh, you know, uh, you you couldn't get away with that kind of uh, uh, daring writing. You know, Hollywood was already yeah. starting to sort of close on in. And uh, uh, a lot of people, they look back at that original Star Trek and, you know, the production values are, are nowhere near what the new uh, uh, franchises are. Uh, but the show was popular because they were writing about things uh, that were really kind of groundbreaking for the time. I mean, uh, uh, TV's first interracial kiss was between Kirk yeah. and Uhura. It had never, ever been done before. It made history when they did that. Yeah, the uh, the original series holds up really well. I mean, yes, it does. Well, they've remastered it. Almost 60 it. years old now. <laughs> yeah, they've remastered it. It's uh, BBC America is running it, and all of the effects work has been replaced with new CGI, so it's actually a lot spippier. No. Okay, I just thought I'd try and puzzle you. All right, well, you got me on that one. You got me on that one. All right, thank you for the phone call. Anyway, we're coming to the end of the program, and, uh, you know, I'd like to say stay tuned for the results of the recall election. Uh, but I think it's a study in foregone conclusions. Uh, there are reports coming out all over of massive fraud, uh, apparently a lot of the polling stations are reporting uh, that their computers are saying people have already voted. I presume no. And uh, so we're going to wake up tomorrow and Gavin Newsom is still going to be governor of California. And California is going to continue its long, slow glide uh, into uh, utter desolation and uh, uh, dystopianism, if you will. All righty, so we're coming up here on the end of the program. Stay tuned for uh, the National Intel Report with John Stadmiller. I understand he's got a very important guest. Uh, you're going to want to hear that. Please spread the word of public broadcasting. Spread the word of whatreallyhappened.com. Please donate. It is urgent at this time. We'll be back tomorrow. Aloha. Oh, let's see. Roger Sales is John's guest. We'll be back tomorrow. Aloha. Owners, if your lender has gone out of business or sold your transaction to another lender or servicer, you may be the victim of a wrongful foreclosure resulting in the loss of your home. If you've already lost your home, are in foreclosure, or even in good standing, you can challenge the mortgage transaction's illegal issue and your property can be restored to you, and your foreclosure can be stopped or reversed and the mortgage transaction declared unenforceable. State laws, U.S. title codes, the Uniform Commercial Codes, and U.S. Supreme Court rulings have upheld that defective mortgage documentations can reverse or stop foreclosures and enforce property title claims in favor of the homeowner. We are having successes in stopping the process of foreclosure, the enforcement of the foreclosure judgments, the sale of property, and evictions after the sale. We are not attorneys, and we don't give legal advice. We are a professional team of legal researchers, providing forensic mortgage audits and expert witnesses. We have the knowledge to produce the evidence and enforce laws regarding your legal issues. We've been in business for 12 years without a complaint. Consultations are free, and we provide a free title search to confirm if your mortgage has legal defects. Please call 855-253-3748. 855, the number 2, keep it today.
You can't handle the truth. You're listening to Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit republicbroadcasting.org today because you can handle the truth.